I never did anything they told me I should do. Yeah. <laughs> because I knew if it was something that God had for me, then I wanted to walk through it authentically. this industry to change me and there were times y'all I'm gonna keep it real with you that I didn't feel seen I'm just tired of working so hard being gracious at what I do getting paid a fraction of the cost I'm tired of hearing my sister say the same thing over and over um, you get tired I hear people go you work a lot or well, have to when I say to our community I know Oprah Winfrey when the curtains are closed. I know it when the cameras aren't running. That's why Oprah Winfrey does not want to sit down publicly with me nor my husband to have a conversation because within minutes, the community would know who Oprah Winfrey really was. I'm all for everybody being the greatest and rising to the, meet the rising of their own life. And so, I mean, all this stuff about there's a, you know, there's a, there was something online about uh, us being separated at the top of the Empire State Building. On that particular day, we were so cold. So I don't know what kind of body language people were talking about. I, I was like just trying to stay warm and that was the fourth thing we had done. And so I, I, I you know, there, there, there's no validity to there being a thing between Taraji and I. It looks like Oprah Winfrey might have to pack her things and go MIA for a while, because the latest news on the block is that she's treating fellow sisters bad, real bad. Apparently, major actresses working under her have raised their voices against alleged mistreatment. I think y'all know who I'm talking about. Fantasia and Taraji P. Henson have been making headlines, and it's not for their incredible performance in their new movie, The Color Purple. The actresses have been spilling beans regarding some real heinous acts committed when the cameras weren't rolling. So, let's delve into the expose against Oprah Winfrey, who as we all know, has been ruling and puppeteering the industry for years. Oprah Winfrey has been known as an IT personality for quite some time now. However, her public image has started to deteriorate in the wake of recent incidents. It's quite common for successful celebrities to be associated with controversies. However, recent events have successfully vilified her in the eyes of the public. We all know that Fantasia has been quite passive when it comes to direct confrontation, but you know it is about to get wild when Fantasia Bruno decides to step up her game. During her appearance at the SAS After Foundation event, she decided to bite the bullet and address the unspoken pressure black celebrities have to go through to fit themselves inside a box. Fantasia revealed that throughout her career, she had to go through a lot to freely express herself in the industry. So I have never allowed this industry to change me, and there were times, y'all, I'm gonna keep it real with you, that I didn't feel seen. Nor did I feel liked. But my grandma used to tell me that what is the profit of the man to gain the whole world but lose his soul, baby? You better stay focused. Fantasia alluded that the industry wanted to condition many young actresses of color so that they would bow their heads at their order. She declared that she stood her ground and didn't budge as she has no desire to lose her soul in the search for fame. Then she shocked the world by admitting that she had to go through hell and back when she was playing Celie in The Color Purple. She revealed that although she was always working, she didn't have any money to even order a pizza. When I played uh, Celie on Broadway, that was heavy for me. I didn't have a team. Everybody that was around me was taking everything that I had. I would get home and couldn't even order a pizza. But I was never home. How is that? I ain't got no money, but I'm always working. To make matters worse, Fantasia claimed that her real-life situation was just as bad as the character. Therefore, it was exceptionally hard for her to play the part. The actress previously told Entertainment Weekly that she felt like she was carrying my cross and Celie's cross during the production. What I felt and carried stepping into her shoes and playing her, I wasn't ready to go back to that. However, in an interview with People, she doesn't mince words about her dislike for playing Celie on stage and how it almost prevented her from saying yes to the new Blitz Basel directed film. She told the outlet, I hated it. That was around the time that my life was so crazy. So it was almost like carrying my cross and Celie's cross. I didn't know how to come out of the character. But that's not all. Fantasia alleged that Oprah also just saw her as a chess piece to make money off of. She even alluded that Oprah didn't cater to her needs when they needed her support the most. And although Fantasia didn't vibe with the character, she still wanted to do the job as such big screen jobs were not offered to girls like her very often. That being said, 
she had an extremely powerful message for young black girls out there. And trust me, you might need to grab a box of tissues for this one. I want to stand for every black girl, every woman who felt like they were looked over. See, I can relate to sugar in my real life because I'm a singer. So I was always pouring out the people, but nobody was pouring into me. Now, Fantasia's woes were pretty similar to that of Taraji's recent revelations. It all began when everyone was talking about Oprah Winfrey's film, The Color Purple. However, during the promotional events, Taraji P. Henson decided to highlight the culture of underpaying the artists of color. During her appearance at the SAG-AFTRA Foundation promotional event, she revealed that she is tired of getting cents and pennies after giving her best throughout her entire career. I am getting to a point where <laughs> I just want to be 10 toes down on an island somewhere. You know, because I'm the fight, you know, as a black woman, you know, we do it with so much grace and get paid half the price of what we're worth. It's ridiculous to see a fellow sister struggle this much after creating and succeeding so much. I mean, everyone remembers her performance in Empire right or the groundbreaking acting she delivered in the 2016 movie hidden figures which unironically is a movie about black women being undermined in the workspace talk about some effed up irony she allegedly shaded oprah for exploiting her hard work and keeping her among the low pay grade employees taraji explained that it is insulting that after giving the best years of her life to her profession as a performer she still can't get a fair payday the actress tiredly admitted that she has to work hard on every project because she doesn't have the financial stability to say no sadly taraji is so backed up in her situation that she wishes that she could do two movies in a year and take the rest of the year off but she just doesn't have the luxury to do that that becomes difficult and it's a slap in my face when people go oh you work all the time well bitch, i have to because the math ain't mathing <laughs> i wish i could do two films a year and relax the rest i wish i had it like that so because you see me working so much, I got to. Taraji spilled the beans on the financial burdens an actress has, revealing that big bills come with the services she utilizes. The majority of the people are unaware that the expenses of the stylists and other team members come from the actress's pockets. So when people hear about the millions the actress is paid, they undermine the work of the team behind the effort. And at the end of the day, they are just getting cents and pennies from the original amount, she says. When you start working a lot, you know, you have a team. Big bills come with what we do. We don't do this alone. The whole entire team behind That's us, right. they have to get paid. Henson told THR's co-editor-in-chief, Nika Samumbi Moody, that despite a career filled with successes like an Oscar for the curious case of Benjamin Button with her Emmy nominations for the series Empire and an acclaimed turn in Hidden Figures, she often feels stuck within the same lowball offers. I've been getting paid and I've been fighting tooth and nail every project to get that same freaking quote and I have bills. Listen, I've been doing this for two decades and sometimes I get tired of fighting because I know what I do is bigger than me. I know that the legacy I leave will affect somebody coming up behind me. My prayer is that I don't want these black girls to have the same fights that me and Viola, Davis, Octavia, Spencer, we out here thugging it out. Otherwise, why am I doing this? For my own vanity, there's no blessing in that. I've tried twice to walk away from the business, but I can't. Because if I do, how does that help the ones coming up behind me? In a vulnerable moment, Taraji decided that she'd had enough and revealed that she has not seen a raise in her pay since 2018, despite accumulating accolades. I'm really getting tired of black women having the same story. It's breaking my heart. Like 20 plus in the game, it breaks my heart. It's like every time you achieve something really incredible, it's almost like the industry looks at it as a fluke. Like, ah, oh, that was like some one-time thing. So you fall back to the bottom and you gotta negotiate and fight tooth and nail to get what you made the last time when, where's my raise? I haven't, had, I haven't seen a raise in my income since Proud Mary. Just like every single time Oprah faced controversy, she took the high road by giving non-answers to the actress's demands. In a social media post, she said, I've long admired Taraji. She can make you laugh, cry, cheer, and feel everything in between. But I had no idea she could sing. Taraji, the actress, a force. Taraji, the singer, a complete revelation. What I love about her portrayal of Shug Avery, 
is that she plays her like a woman who not only sang the blues but had lived the blues. Only Taraji could do that. She shared that her late father once told her, you're going to be one of the greatest actresses alive, but wait until the world hears you sing. Taraji, the stage is now yours, and I already see the standing ovations for you. I'm fiercely welcoming Taraji to the Purple Sisterhood, and I cannot wait for you to meet her version of Shug. Now one could argue that if Oprah did indeed acknowledge the superior acting skills of Taraji, why did she not pay her an equivalent amount of money? It's absolutely perplexing to see that Oprah decided to produce a project where the actresses were treated like trash. So, Taraji mustered her courage again and called out Oprah for forcing the actors to drive around in rental cars. You heard that right, they had to drive themselves. And to make it even worse, any damages to the car would have had to be paid by the actresses as well. Talk about bad working conditions. To put things into perspective, you have to understand that the actors are required to put in incredibly long shifts usually up to 14 hours at a time with only a few breaks here and there. Now it would be natural for them to be exhausted at the end of the day, so not providing them with the facility of pick and drop is just a recipe for disaster. To make things worse, sources have reported that the shooting would end late into the night and the cast would have to drive around without any security. In an interview with the New York Times, Taraji spilled the deets on the way they were treated. They gave us rental cars and I was like, I can't drive myself to set in Atlanta. This is insurance liability, it's dangerous. Now they robbing people. What do I look like taking myself to work by myself in a rental car? Henson said. So I was like, can I get a driver or security to take me? I'm not asking for the moon. They're like, well, if we do it for you, we got to do it for everybody. Well, do it for everybody. It's stuff like that. Stuff I shouldn't have to fight for. I was on the set of Empire fighting for trailers that wasn't infested with bugs. These dreadful details left a deep impression on the legendary comic Cat Williams, and he jumped on the chance to call out Oprah and her production for lowballing a gifted actress like her. It was a sad. <clears throat> They've been hurting me for a long time, and I just ain't said nothing. But all of this isn't new to us, right? There is one actress in particular that has been calling out Oprah for years speaking out about how she mistreats people in her movies and productions. Of course, we're talking about none other than the Queen Monique. She has also made sure to add her two cents on the situation. And boy, she did not hold back. In her recent interview with The Root, Monique claimed that Oprah has mastered the act of playing the savior in every situation, just like this one. She said, everything was, didn't I champion for y'all? I was like, stop it. You didn't champion for those black women, for our sisters. Monique said, what she did was, we can treat them like we always treat them. Who gon' check me, boo? I'm Oprah Winfrey. You know everything should have been done when you showed up. Now, when you hear our beautiful sisters saying, yeah, but it got fixed, it's like we're making it worse. Monique insisted that there's no way that the actors should not have encountered these issues if Winfrey were doing her job. So, when Oprah Winfrey sits at the helm and Taraji P. Henson says, it's an honor that we were handpicked for this movie, well, if they were handpicked for that movie, those women should have been taken care of from the moment go, Oprah got caught. That's what happened. Now, since this facade went down, Monique's name has been brought up time and again. Now, for those who are confused, Monique is also a wandering spirit that actually stood up to the wage gap and other injustices that came her way. To give you some context, Monique's troubles in the industry and also her fueled hatred of Oprah started when she refused to promote her film, Precious, for free at the Cannes Film Festival. To give you some background, Monique played the role of Mary in the hit blockbuster, Precious, in which Oprah, surprise, surprise, was listed as a producer. In spite of the movie doing well, Mo was paid a measly 50 grand for the movie and not a penny more. And when the production studio then had the audacity to reach out to her to promote the movie for free at the Cannes Film Festival, she lost it. As a side note, nowhere did it say in her contract that she had to promote the movie. And so between being a busy woman hosting shows and being hands on a mama and wife, she respectfully told them to F off. I said, Oprah, I'm doing a talk show. I'm doing a comedy tour. I have a husband and I have babies. I have a little bit of downtime and I'm going to take advantage of it. So I'm not going anywhere because I'm not obligated to go anywhere. I've done my part. So we mutually agreed to disagree. That was it. Next thing I know, I am considered difficult and hard to work with, which ultimately started the feud between M.O. and Oprah and led to years of blackballing, labeling her as difficult to work with, although we all know who is in the right here. When she won the Academy Award months later, Monique declined to thank director Lee Daniels and Oprah during her acceptance speech, leading to an extensive feud 
during which the actress alleged she had been blackballed from the industry. Monique told The Hollywood Reporter, I felt the same injustices and inequalities that all the black women who came to Hollywood before me felt. Oftentimes people call that anger, they call it bitterness, they call it unstable. They give it all these titles except what it really is. The bottom line is that she has zero respect for Oprah at this point and has zero problems telling the world. I want you to understand something too. See, this is why me and Oprah Winfrey got a problem. Until that woman says, let me apologize to you publicly, it'll be to the day I leave this earth because what you did was malicious. I would say, Oprah Winfrey, you know what you need to do and stop hiding behind what you call was negative comments. What people are beginning to do is see you for who you are. Although people might call Monique out for overacting over a meager pay difference, knowing that lowballing was the least, Monique had to suffer at the hands of Oprah. You see, some time back, Monique opened up about her childhood trauma. She revealed that when she was very young, her older brother allegedly essayed her, and when she told her parents, they branded her as a liar. In an exclusive interview in Essence, I was molested by my older brother. And even when I confronted him and told my parents, he said I was lying and nothing was really done. However, Monique got past her hurt and decided not to blame her parents. I'm not blaming my parents because me and my brother were both their children. And I just don't know the kind of position they felt they were in. My father was very upset, but it never got mentioned again. I'll never forget my mother saying, if it's true, it will surface again. And I remember thinking, why would I lie? Why is there even an if in this? Monique claimed she and Winfrey had a lengthy conversation about her family situation and how she hasn't been on good terms with her entire family. Oprah, the savior, of course reassured her and promised to never feature her family or talk about any of the drama Mo had entrusted her with on her show, which evidently turned out to be a lie since Oprah jumped on the opportunity to expose the fact that Monarchy and her mother were not on good terms. Mo explained that she felt betrayed by Winfrey and then tried reaching out to her to bury the hatchet, but her efforts fell on deaf ears. We weren't even speaking. Then I see the show and I can tell that my mother is trying to make a dollar. I know my family. I reached out to everybody I could to try to get to Oprah. No, nothing. It just went dead. That is, until the party in Yongo's honor. Mo took the chance and confronted her. Oprah Winfrey was sitting on my right, and then I turned to her and said, now I need to talk to you. There were some phenomenal black women there. You could have heard a pin drop. I said, since you didn't want to return my calls, for whatever reason, I'm going to say this right here. But instead of being ashamed of her antics, Oprah took the high road, just like always, and graciously claimed that if she had offended Mo in any way, she would apologize. Mind you, this was a private event, so there weren't any cameras involved. However, things took a turn for the worse when rumors started circulating that Monique was difficult to work with. Now, before you could blame Mo for not saying yes to the tour, Know that Mo also had a life outside of the movie scripts, and she wanted to spend some time with her family. It was my third marriage, my second round of children. So, I understood by then that when you sacrifice everything for a place called Hollywood, you wind up being by yourself. I know the history before me. I know those stories. And not only did those women die broke, they died brokenhearted. They died lonely because they gave everything to a business and in the end, it gave them nothing. Monique later appeared on the Comedy Hype channel and revealed that this behavior is not confined to Oprah only. She explained that other major black celebs in positions of power also take joy in exploiting young black talents, including people like Tyler Perry, T.D. Jakes, and notorious rapper and producer, Diddy. After Taraji and Fantasia spoke up about the pay difference in the industry, their friends showed them support. Gabriel Union chimed in saying, not a damn lie told, not. A. Damn. Lie. We go to bat for the next generation, and hell even our own generation and above. We don't hesitate to be the change that we all need to see, and it takes a toll on your mind, health, soul, and career, if we're keeping it. To add to that, Kiki Palmer addressed Henson's comments about how a Hollywood paycheck, saying, the entertainment industry is just like any other industry. We run businesses to keep our brands afloat, us being the brand business. And it's that team of company members that decrease any assumed large lump sum. This includes monthly expenses, just like everyone else. In the words of Biggie, more money, more problems. To make money, you must spend money. So what seems like a lot is taken by a lot. There is still privilege in this depending what vantage point you are seeing from. But in our industry amongst one another, this is neutralized. This is why no one can really have one job anymore. People working outside of the entertainment industry may do Uber Eats, post Masties, accountant part-time, 
substitute teacher every other week, etc. Apart from that, recently a clip started making rounds where Oprah and Taraji were seen attending a press event while giving each other a cold shoulder. Due to the clip, rumors started going around about Oprah allegedly blackballing Taraji. When the heat became unbearable, Oprah was forced to directly address the feud between her and Taraji. It's well, first true. of all, the thing that is so upsetting to me is that somebody went on and 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 something went viral where they're analyzing us on, the on, body top, of the, on top of the we Empire State. We were cold. Oprah said you were cold. We were cold. It was cold. That yeah, there's was the a whole thing we had done about, that day. Yes. She also addressed Taraji's rental car claims. I heard that Taraji was upset because she'd been asked to do a rental car. I personally called Toby Emmerich, who was at the time the head of Warner Brothers, and say, and he said, well, that means we have to do cars for everybody. Then I said, then we do cars for everybody. And if it's necessary, I will pay for the cars myself. He goes, well, we don't want you to do that. But no matter how Oprah tries to justify her actions, the public court has given the judgment against her. One user wrote, Shame on you, Oprah. Now I understand what Monique was up against. I'm so disgusted with you, Oprah. How dare you and Tyler mistreat our amazing actors and actresses. Too much underhanded sh going down. Sad, sad, sad. Another added, if black actresses go on strike, they will be nothing to look at. His black actresses and actors are so very important to the industry. This is where the money comes in. The part that is so disturbing is when black underplay black. And who is at the top of the throne? Not one black person. So what do you think? Does Oprah deserve all of this backlash? Or are things being taken out of context? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be the first to see my next video. I post updates like this every week where I uncover the secrets of your favorite celebrities.